Hello, how's it going? I wanted to go over my word lookup script, which might be the easy solution for some of you, or others of you might find that it has a very major flaw, which I'm going to go over, and then I'm also going to go over some alternatives to try to remedy that flaw. So, um, essentially, it just looks up definitions of words, so if I just, you know, press my shortcut, um, it just looks up the definition. Pretty, pretty simple. Um, it's just the top three definitions with part of speech. Using this free dictionary API here, there's a couple of APIs available, but I've been using this one for a while, so I'll stick with it. Um, the notifications last for like 60 seconds or something. And um, actually, let me just show you what we're getting here. So um, as you can see, it's just JSON, but if I just curl this example link, uh, curl that, this is what we're working with, and then just gotta parse through that and send a notification. And um, the shortcut to actually like pull up this script is just, I have it defined in, um, uh, DWM, you can define that wherever you define shortcuts, but uh, let me actually get the script up. Uh, scripts and define here. So I'm using xclip to just get the um, primary selection. So whatever I've highlighted with my mouse, that's the primary selection. Um, so get that and then uh, the query is just going to be curling the API here and using the word from the selection. Um, if there is nothing returned from that query, then just exit out of the script here and uh, send me a notification saying that it was an invalid word. So like if I highlight a bunch of junk here and try to run it, it's an invalid word. It can't look that up. But if I run it on an actual word and um, note that no matter what the word is, um, it pretty much, I, I think I have yet to find like a normal word that it didn't work on. I, I don't think I found, I don't know. Let's see, will it work on API? Didn't work on API. Um, so any like actual English word, API is just, you know, an abbreviation. So it's not gonna work on that, but any actual English word it's worked for. So um, anyways, here's the actual meat of the script and it's using JQ. And the reason I'm using JQ is because I wanted to actually try the proper tool to parse through JSON. Um, if you don't know, JQ is just, uh, here, I'll actually show you. Um, on Arch, it's, it's just literally under JQ. Um, I don't know what it is on other distros, but I'm assuming it's something similar. It's a command line JSON processor. If I just do man of JQ, um, it's essentially just for, you know, parsing through JSON. Um, and this is the, you know, supposed correct tool to do this with. Uh, previously, I had some regex and grep to get out what I wanted from it, which worked well enough, but I wanted to try using JQ. So um, that is why I'm using JQ here. Um, anyways, so what I'm doing is just echoing the query and piping that into JQ, uh, dash R for raw. And then what I'm doing is I'm just getting, so I have the key meanings and everything I want under, um, everything that I want to get is under this key meaning. So I want to get this part of speech objects. I want to get this definition here object, which is under definition. So, um, First, I'm just going to get everything under meanings, then pipe that. And I actually want to define a uh, part of speech and then this definition thing here individually. The reason I want to define them individually um, is because I want to get the top three. So like when I when I run it right, I'm getting the top three with a part of speech. So part of speech definition, and then it's three of them. Um, and the best way I found to do that was to actually redefine them. So POS is going to be for part of speech, and then DEF is going to be for... Uh, definitions and then definition um, and then pipe that and get the first three and the reason I wanted to redefine them is so that I can actually have them combined to get the top three total rather than the top three per part of speech for example because if you have a word that has multiple parts of speech and then there's three definitions for each part of speech you could end up with you know nine definitions right um, and I only want three total so the last thing I'm doing is just piping it into some formatting. So um, new line and then actually put the part of speech and then dot space and then put the definition. Um, so this is the meat of what's going on and then just send a notification with a uh, timeout of 60,000 milliseconds, so a minute, uh, just so I actually have time to read it and then word definition. Um, the reason I actually want just the first three definitions is uh, because it can get rather long and I'll actually demonstrate this. And I left in my older uh, JQ for all definitions, um, which was fine. But the, the thing is, if you have a word that like, I think two probably has a lot of definitions. Yeah, so 
when you have this many, I don't want a notification this long. Um, you know, even though it could be helpful, right? Uh, I, I just want the top three since I'm just kind of using this as a quick reference. Of course you could, um, I will, I will put uh, my GitHub with this script. Um, it should be uploaded by the time this video goes live. So I will put that in the description and you can of course modify it as you wish. If you want to change it to be the top seven or uh, put the phonetic of the word or the origin, whatever you want. Uh, this is actually a very powerful little API. So I will put the link for this API as well. So you can also uh, use that. Um, and there's a couple of other APIs available too. Um, and I just wanted to show this one other API I know of quickly. If I curl uh, dict protocol and then dict.org um, and it's D and then put a word. So um, I don't know, example. Um, and that'll just give me definitions too. So this is a different API you could also use and then parse through this API if you wanted to do that. Um, but you probably have realized the major flaw with this, which is that it requires an internet connection. Um, I have to have an internet connection to be able to curl this API and look up words, um, which for me personally isn't really an issue since this is on my home computer and then I could also just go over to the bookshelf and get out the dictionary if I really needed, right? If I actually had no internet, I could just pull out the dictionary. So. For me, that's not an issue, but if you're like, for example, going out with a laptop and you wanna be able to look up words um, just directly from your computer and have dictionaries actually installed, well, there are tools for that too. So I wanted to go over a couple of those tools um, since those are pretty useful for obvious reasons. So first of all, we have WordNet. Um, I actually installed this like last week and have been looking around with it. And honestly, I think I might keep it even though it's not like my quick reference little lookup. It's it's pretty useful. So if I just do uh, here, let me make it a little bit smaller. WN by itself. Um, and the package is actually called wordnet-com in here. Yeah, wordnet-common. But anyways, so WordNet has a bunch of different stuff. Everything from overview of senses. So examples of how the word actually works. Um, to like synonyms, to derived forms. Um, if you're doing anything where you need a little bit more information about a word, whether you're writing or you're learning English or whatever, this might be pretty useful. So if I do WN and then, um, I don't know, example, and then I give it like over for the overview, this is actually going to explain how the word example is used. Um, or I could give it some like, I don't know, I could look for synonyms. Um, and it'll give me synonyms. So this is a pretty powerful little program and it's a database. It's an electronic lexical database uh, from Princeton University. Um, but anyways, yeah, it just downloads as a database and it has the database, so it's completely local. Um, so this one's pretty useful. And then there's also Stardict and DictD. And these two have one thing in common, which is that you are gonna be installing dictionaries separately, but uh, the reason these are often used and pretty powerful is because you can get essentially whatever dictionary you want. So um, in the formatting that each supports. So if you want like a language to language dictionary, like say you want a German to French dictionary, you can get that. Um, and for the protocol for either Stardict would support Stardict or DictD would support Dict, uh, Dict protocol. Um, the main difference between these two is that DictD actually runs as a daemon. Um, so it, uh, here it actually, this, this is somebody's personal site with, uh, some information about Stardict and I'm going to link this in the description because I think this is pretty helpful to get you started with Stardict if you wanted to use it. Um, there's a command line version, SDCV, um, and you can just, you know, give it a word and it'll define it. Um, or you could just do SDCV and then word. Why is my X key not working? My X key was not working for a second. That was weird. Um, this keyboard is like. I don't know how old it is. It's pretty old. Uh, anyways, uh, SDCV and then just give it a word. I could also even get JSON output if I wanted that, which I don't really want that in this case. I mean, if I were going to put this into a notification, I would just go through with, you know, normal tools as is, normal shell tools and parse through. Um, but anyways, yeah, that's SDCV. And then DictD is pretty similar, but it's also got a daemon. And uh, both of these have graphical front ends. So here are some, and I will link this in the description so you can get it uh, if you prefer graphical front ends to dictionaries. But uh, Stardict actually has the package called Stardict. Um, that's, the, that's the main application here. That's the GUI for it. And then SDCV is just the command line version. Um, and of course you can see like there's dictionaries available. Um, if I just do sdcv-l, that's going to list out the dictionaries I have. They, 
install to uh, somewhere in user share. Um, and I have a, I downloaded a Wiktionary English to English from the AUR, just, you know, as an example, but um, you can usually find whatever you're looking for. Um, and if you can't find it, then I will link this uh, helpful page here in the description. And there's also an ArchWiki page on it with more info too. Um, but anyways, that's about it. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you next time. Peace.